let's assume a mine wants to procure energy from a uh, earth independent power producer, so not ESCOM, independent power producer, what they typically do is go into the market and they try source uh, the best independent power producer. And from the responses that they get from the market, uh, they choose which is the best uh, developer for this project. Um, so your first, I guess, your first role player is the off taker. Uh, your second role player is the developers of the project. And what the developers of the projects will do is incorporate us, uh, a company uh, which is dedicated solely towards the implementation of the project, so to develop, construct, and operate the project. Um, and then they'll enter into a power purchase agreement with that special purpose vehicle or that company. Uh, the shareholders in that uh, company would be typically your, the sponsors, so the developers who bid for the project initially. And then, because the, I guess, because the company or the seller is a newly incorporated company, they don't have the skills uh, to construct this project. They don't have the skills to operate the project. So they'll go out into the market and procure uh, a construction contractor or EPC contractor. Uh, the EPC contractor is the one that actually constructs the project. So the EPC contractor is experienced in the market and they've done, they've constructed other let's say solar uh, projects before or other wind projects before. So that's the, that's the person who will contract with the SPV uh, to construct the project. Once the construction is completed, um, once the construction is completed and the operations and maintenance contractor uh, will take over the operations and maintenance of that facility. I'm just probably simplifying it a lot, but uh, I think it's easier without talking about other documents that are involved, which could be quite substantial. Um, another thing, especially in terms of the financing of the projects, right? Um, the financing, these projects, the value of, I guess the construction costs, or let's say the project costs, uh, could go up to like more than billions of rands. Uh, the company doesn't have the funding because it's newly incorporated to actually pay for the construction of this project or the project costs related to it. So it goes into the market, uh, it goes to your, your lenders, and it's normally your big uh, five lenders in South Africa. That's who we see playing in the market. And those lenders could fund um, up to 80% of the project. Uh, we typically see between 70% or 80% of the project being funded by debt. So for Sorry, for a billion rand project, that means uh, the lenders are funding 700 million of the uh, 700 million in debt or 800 million in debt, which is a substantial sum. So, even when we undertake due diligences into these projects, uh, the lenders would definitely be concerned about who the EPC contractor is and the terms of the EPC contract. And they'll also be uh, concerned about who the operations and maintenance contractor is and the terms of that operations and maintenance contract agreement. And most importantly, what the power purchase agreement says and who the offtaker is. Because at the end of the day, the, the lenders are dependent on the offtaker paying the tariff to the seller in order for them to get their uh, debt back for debt service. Probably one of the most striking experiences, or one of the first experiences I had in the world of uh, of, of wind farms uh, in South Africa, related to, uh, to 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 an issue that developed around the transformer technology that was required for purposes of of, of, of operating one of the one of the earlier wind farm installations, where where on the particular project post post installation and commissioning there were um, repeated failures in the um, in the in, in the transformers attached to to each one of the um, of the particular wind turbines and the and the parties both both from the contractor and the employment perspective were unable to identify what exactly the cause of the failure was um, ultimately resulting in the employer su uh, <coughs> suggesting that this was a systemic failure in terms of either quality or workmanship on the part of the contractor and seeking the replacement of, of all of the transformers in question the the, the mystery was ultimately resolved through uh, through through an international, uh, in, in fact, a German expert on uh, on on transformation.
transformer technology and the use of wind farms, who, who identified the problem as a as a as a as a specification lack of requirement in terms of the transformers being able to deal with uh, with variable frequencies in terms of the, uh, the the energy generated through the uh, the wind turbines themselves, which obviously did not did not operate at a, at a, at a constant level depending on whatever the level of uh, of wind power was, and that and that frequency variation going up and down had a had an effect on the on the transformers in turn. Um, that from the transformer from the the um, the, the uh, uh, supplier's perspective was was an issue that was wholly unforeseeable simply because the, the, the sort of variable frequency issue hadn't been raised either in the specification or drawn otherwise to their attention. In fact, it was a, a relatively esoteric um, uh, issue at the time. Um, it was never this issue was never resolved in a in a in a, in a court or through arbitration. It was ultimately settled between the parties. Um, but but certainly. Certainly, in terms of of giving a very striking example of, of how this sort of deployment of technology could can uh, can create a substantial issue, um, this this would be a very good example.